the color? It's a new? Oh, up there now. Okay. We can only control the speaker here, right? But we can't control the individual there that could be confused and even maybe. <coughs> so how can we go into that Discord? This one? Oh, okay. And then we can talk individually there. Okay. We respectfully request the Sangha great virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach and guide us how to end birth and death leave suffering and attain bliss and quickly realize non-birth. Kung din dai duk tang tin vi tu pha phoi kap nhak thiếp chung san Tình chuyên yêu phao ngôn Giáo đau ngạ mùng Như há liệu sanh thoát tư Lý khô đạc lạc Tốt chứng vô sân <cười> Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo Sadanto Suchedo Ye Lahudi San Miao San Puto Sye. Namo Tadakta To Yada Ya Lahadi Tam Miao Tam Boda Toa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million eons is difficult to encounter. Now that I'm able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come ones, true and actual principles. Wu shang sheng sheng wei miao fa ba hi chen wan chen an zao yu wo jin jian wen de shou chi yan jie ru lai zhen shi O oh, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Huynang, Great Master Xinhua, all good monks and nuns, and all good knowing advisors, Amitofo. Chu Fu Pusa, Liu Zhu Shi Fu Shang Ren, Gu Wei Chu Jia Ren, Gu Wei Shang Chi Shi, Amitofo. 
chiếc bậc bồ tát quên thư lục tổ và thường tiên hóa quý thầy cô và cái vị tiến sĩ thức an di đà phật Hello everyone. Uh, today is the 11th of February 2023. Thank you all for coming to our lecture of the Six Page Sutra. We are currently discussing Chapter Three, Doubts and Questions, uh, on slide 93. Mm. So this is primarily uh, the uh, some of the unclear things that uh, the magistrate, which uh, magistrate back then, he's sort of like a state governor in the U.S. nowadays. He's a big shot. He's a devout uh, disciple of Master Hui Neng, and he had some questions that he wanted to ask on behalf of the assembly. So he usually, when you ask questions, uh, it benefits a lot of people, not just yourself. Uh, so feel free to ask questions, uh, and to have doubt is uh, normal. And of course, uh, Buddhism is so multidimensional, has um, not just dimensions, but also many layered, deeply layered. That's why uh, feel free to ask, and we'll try to clarify it for you. Mm. And he's explaining, the six-page chart is explaining about the Pula and Dhamma door. People then say they wish to escape uh, this how world with a lot of suffering, a lot of struggle, uh, to go to the Western Bliss Pure Land, where they've been promised that there is to be an instantaneous end to suffering. Mm, this is why the uh, Asians uh, are so keen upon uh, escaping to the Western Bliss Pure Land. And the Master Huynang says, I know it's difficult for you uh, to, uh, know, uh, to hear about this Pure Land Dhamma door. I'm sure that in the back of your mind, you sort of wonder, have some doubts. You ask yourself, is this for real? Does it really exist? And, uh, and so Master Hui Neng says, I believe it does, as a matter of fact. Are you interested in me making it appear in front of you? Okay. Uh, and the whole assembly said, oh, yes, yes. Please, please, make it appear in front of us. Okay. And a little bit of video, you know, TikTok clip video would help, or YouTube video that, that's, uh, that's also very nice as well. And, and this is how Master Hui Yang responded. He says, he says um, uh, I will, I will uh, let me talk about the Pila and Dhamma door for you first and why we're practicing Chan here. Uh, and he says, so he went, so this is towards the end of the explanation, and hopefully by the end of this explanation, and then he might show us the pure land. Huh? So hang in there, hang in there, huh? don't give up yet, okay? Uh, something good is coming. Uh, so 93, text, the self-nature inwardly illuminates and casts out the three poison. The hells and all such offenses are destroyed at once. Inwardly and outwardly, there is bright penetration. The, this is no different from the West. But if you do not cultivate, how can you go there? 自信内照,三毒即除,地狱等罪,一时消灭,内外明彻,不易西方,不作此修,如何道比? Okay, 94, commentary. Uh, the Patriarch, uh, this great teacher says, your self-nature, not just the self-nature, we're talking about your self-nature that you have. This is what you are capable of. I know many of you say, self-nature? What is that? Yes? Anyone? Keep on talking about the nature and self-nature. I don't even see it. It doesn't matter. That's what's beautiful about it. Okay? Have no doubt. Okay? There's something called your self-nature. It's for real. You have it. Why? Uh, here's the proof. 
it inwardly illuminates and casts out the three poisons. This is what it does. If you give it a chance, your self-nature can illuminate the dark corners of your mind where your greed, your anger, your stupidity, those three poisons hide. Did you know that? In your beautiful brain of yours, I wanted to say little brains of yours, but let me be polite today. We just ate a lot, so you don't want to be shaken up too much. You know? Okay, so in the beautiful mind of yours, yeah, yours too, Danny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, uh, it, it has dark places where your greed, your anger, your ignorance hide. This is very important. Please pay attention. You say, I don't have any greed. I don't have any ignorance. I don't have any stupidity. Okay? Anyone feels that way? I'm, I'm, I'm asking. I'm not saying I have no such thing. Okay? Koreans, do you have the three poisons? Hmm? What do you think? Okay? How do you know you have them? How? Your proof do we have that you have them? Because you don't want complete my sentence? Anyone? You don't want others to know. Is there anything about you you don't want others to know? I rest my case. That's it. Okay? So that's where they're hidden. That's why it's called dark places. It's out of sight. It's, there's no light there. You can't see because you don't want others to see. Yeah, amazing. You nurture the dark corners of your mind and you preserve it as if uh, a treasure. You know, smart people, they hide their assets, especially Chinese people, you know. The richer Chinese usually dress so shabby, drive lousy cars and so forth. They drive like Korean cars, Japanese cars. They don't drive German cars. <laughs> you truly rich, you will never drive a German sports car. Okay? Anyone feel, feel uh, offended? <laughs> okay? So, so, they play low key because they want to hide their assets. You know, they want to draw attention. Your greed, anger, stupidity are treated as if they're treasures of yours. Even better and more important, your treasures. Because sometimes you want, oh, thank you, children. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm so touched. This is something about it. It is so touching. Children giving you things, they bow to you. I mean, uh, what else can you ask? out of life. <laughs> anyway, so, so people are proud of the fact they can hide their asset and hide their treasure. And such people actually have a dark secret where they actually hide the greed, the anger, the stupidity. It's a deeper level than their treasures, their asset, their wealth. Did you know that? Agree or disagree? Think of all the rich friends you have. They're willing to give away money to the Philharmonic and the museums 
and the Red Cross. They're not willing for you to know about their greed, their anger, and their stupidity. It's like a slate of treasure. Mm, cool? And they think they're smart. <laughs> uh, your self-nature, if you give it a chance, will illuminate, will shed a light on your greed, your anger, your stupidity. It's you who actually are stopping it. See, you should be all doing like Sheng Xi, like uh, Jung, like uh, the old monk. You should all be looking down. You should, oh yeah, that's what I do. I, uh, I, uh, I don't want to illuminate my greed, anger, stupidity. Okay? Uh, and when you, and this is, this is the great news. If you only allow yourself nature to illuminate your own greed, your own anger, your own stupidity, will cast it out naturally. It's you who says, no, I don't want, I don't want to look at this. It hurts too much. It's too embarrassing. Why don't I tell my mother who break my mother's heart? Hmm? Hmm. And so this is a very powerful statement. He says, if you only just only allow yourself nature to do its job, it will naturally illuminate. I'm adding naturally. Okay? Illuminate. And throw out the undesirable part of you. You're not impressed. You say, I don't believe it. I doubt it's true. <laughs> That's why it's called doubt and questions. <coughs> okay? <coughs> the hells and such offenses are destroyed at once. If you do that, if you allow yourself nature to identify where your greed and anger and stupidity are hiding, poof! They're gone. And because they're gone, uh, then they, would you believe the hell such offenses are destroyed at once? Here's the principle behind it. Did you know? Did you know? Please, please pay attention. Okay? This is important. Every time you are angry, Anyone? I'm look. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. I was almost looking at someone. <laughs> Every time you're angry, what happens? A hell that a hell is immediately created that corresponds to the punishment you receive for being angry down there, waiting for you to go there. I swear to God. I mean, <laughs> that's the honest truth. This is a Buddha's wisdom. He said, that's what happened. Why do you think there are hells down there? It's because we created the condition, we created them, and the hells are waiting. Similarly, same thing, to be fair, Every time you do something good and nice, huh? guess what happens? The reverse effect also happens. A heavenly palace is created up there, waiting for you. So that's why we are creating the, our world ourselves. We're creating hells, we're creating the heavens ourselves. It's not God, I mean, it's not our good friend God. We all do respect. Did you know that? So you believe now? It's, it's a fair game. 
if you create offenses, the hells are created. If you create good deeds, the heaven, the heaven palaces are created, the heavens are created. All the same. No discrimination. It's all about us. Isn't that great news? So what do you want? You want to do things to serve yourself, then you are creating all the bad things happening in our world. The hells, the animals, the ghosts, and so forth are created by us. By our in the dark. And, 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 and the, the, the source of such things are the dark corners of our mind. Okay? Uh, next one, okay? Just for your, 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 your reference, uh, that, that the hells and the heavens are created by us, okay? Uh, and and I, I didn't understand it, because when I first started, there was a first day jahat, a uh, Cambodian first day jahat, and, and he was like a hundred and uh, six or something at the time, uh, and he told me, he says, if you're not nice to me, if you are not coming to support me, okay, I'm going to go to the heavens. My heavenly palace is waiting for me right now. Okay? I didn't understand it. And later and I learned more about the Dharma, and I said, oh, wow, it's, it's true that, that, uh, that um, we create our own heavens, our own hells because of our own karmas. Okay? Okay. Next. Inwardly and outwardly, there's bright penetration. This is no different from the West. He says, he says, uh, he says, uh, this self-nature of ours, okay, can shine either inside or outside. Everywhere. It can penetrate everywhere. Okay? It's just you who don't believe it. It's you who doubt it. There's such a thing. And that's why you never see it. You have no such doubt. You see it yourself like he did. Master Wei Neng did. Okay? He says, is this, this is the same. You don't have to go to the West. This happens here, happens to the West as well. No difference. Where you hear your self nature illuminates inside and outside. You go to the West, same thing. You do the same thing. You have to use your self nature, allow your self nature to illuminate the dark corners of your mind. Is that clear? No difference at all. So he says, if you don't cultivate, how can you go there? Okay? have to go to, you have to, you have to do something to deserve going there. You have to do something to plant the seeds, create blessings for you to go there. Someone has to do something, okay? Uh, so far, so good? Yes, sir, in the back. No? Um, so how can we make our self-nature to illuminate those three poisons? Okay. Uh, how do you let yourself nature do it? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I just talk Dharma. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> I'm just a monk speaking Dharma. This is sacrilegious. <laughs> How can you ask me something I can't answer? <laughs> Sorry, Master. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> I'm so offended. <laughs> so how the rest of you help him out, help me out. How can you make it happen? How do you let yourself nature? I gave you a clue already. I hear. You don't believe it. Mm -hmm. 
You don't believe it's the case. That's why it doesn't happen. You stop yourself. He you says, no, nah, that's not possible. Yes, Daniel. So I feel like I believe in the self nature, but I assume that you're saying there's like subtle moments where we don't have faith in ourselves. Can you give us an example where we yeah. do it? Yeah. Uh, it all it takes is for you to say, mm, I don't know. I don't know. And you stop yourself. That's what happens to all of us. There's something in your intellect that questions. And so he, your heart may say, yeah, I believe you, yeah, I, I have no reason for me to doubt you. But when it's time, at that very moment, you say, what if I'm wrong? I've never seen it before. There's no facts, there's no data. I, I don't know anyone who's done it before. What if I'm wrong? I'd be the laughing stock of all my colleagues. And especially my wife would look at me and say, <laughs> You fool. You gave away the farm for what? Okay, that's what happens. This doubt that sneaks in, that doubt there is called what? What? It's called thought delusion. You don't understand. And yet, you think you do. The most dangerous people are the ones who think they understand when they don't. Agree, disagree. They're extremely dangerous. I'm scared of them. I'm frightened of them. If you have such employees and you give them a task and you expect it to be done, they're so sure they can do it, you could die because of it. You could lose your job because of it. <laughs> it's a scary, scary thing. And I'm scared of some of my sanghans, some of the nuns, some of the monks. They really believe they can do it. I say, no, you can't. No, you can't. Please spare me. <laughs> you can run away you want to, but I know you can't do it. You too. From Samson Lao. Hi, Master. I have a question. You mentioned that hells and heavens are created by us. I trust everyone has done good deeds and also bad. If hells and heavens are created, where do we go? Sorry? Repeat. You mentioned that hells and heavens are created by us. I trust everyone has done good deeds and also bad. If hells and heavens are created, where do we go? We go where our karmic forces propel us. At your moment of death, uh, your karmic force manifests itself as the last thought 
you have. And the last thought there is the thought of anger, thought of stupidity, thought of greed. That's where you're going to go. However, if your last thought is a thought of, ooh, I love Master Yong Hua. <laughs> Just in case for your consideration. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not greedy. If you don't, I'm not angry either. I, feel, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> That's called ignorance, my dear. <laughs> okay? That last thought right there is what you're going to prefer to go. And then, uh, the, and then it gets more complicated. And then during the 49 days after you die, things will change that. But typically, uh, typically, it's the last thought before you die. That's very, very dangerous. This is why the Tibetans, by the way, they, their practice is to manipulate the last thought they have so that the last thought is, that I'm going to go to a better place, a better plane. Hmm? Okay? And that's how they control their reincarnation. But what they don't realize is that and, 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 they, and this is I, what I f personally feel as their, the drawback on their approach is that it's still a 49-day period after they die. Unless the fourth stage are higher, then they have control. If they are below fourth stage arhat, it's still a 49-day period where things will change drastically for them. Like what? Ask the Americans. Ask the Vietnamese. They're supposed to go to heaven, for example, because the last thought, the last thought they have is, oh, I love Matthew Yung Hoa, remember? Something like that? We hope. <laughs> have no doubt. <laughs> okay? <laughs> see, 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 how did you know? <laughs> That's what happened to smart people. You ask them and say, can you believe this? Yeah. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> because I don't know. I mean, I believe you, but, but deep down, I don't know. <laughs> After all this time together... <laughs> Okay, never mind. Okay. So, why was I again? <laughs> so, you have this last thought which says, Oh, I want to leave my fortune to help save hungry children. Okay? That's a good thought. Heavens. Heavens. Trust me. Okay? Uh, however, uh, however, uh, what happened is that uh, you, uh, what happened is that during the 49 di nine, uh, day periods, uh, the people who do things on your behalf are creating karmas on your behalf as well. And that's where things go either better or worse for you. So for example, I don't know about the Koreans or the Chinese. I can speak about Vietnamese. The guys remember seeing it when I was a kid. Okay? My grandfather was dead. Okay, and I believe we put his name on the uh, on the ancestors' altar. I remember very vividly. I was there. You know, everyone is crying and so forth, and we're looking very unhappy. At least pretend to look unhappy. And I was happy because on the altar there's a a pig with the, the apple. 
I was so happy. I said, we get to eat? When do we get to eat? When do we get to eat? <laughs> and guess what? If you kill on behalf of the deceased, what was the case? The killing karma goes to him. It's very dangerous. Things will change during a 49-day period. So that's why I said, the Tibetans, if they happen to be four-stage ahat or higher, okay, then they exempt from it. But most of them are not. And therefore, therefore, they may be able to manipulate their consciousness before they die. But after they die, after they're dead, that's when things could, could, could happen. Bad things will happen to them. You see? So the Dharma is not foolproof. The Dharma of reincarnation, whatever, to a better body doesn't work in my in my my beliefs is that it doesn't work for them. Okay? On the other hand, if you are a four stage ahat or high already, you don't need that Dharma. You have the skills to choose to go wherever you want. There's no need for that though. I don't know. I never practice it, but I, I just use my logic and my database to make conjectures. So please take it with a grain of salt. Okay? All right. Go home and create good karmas and create more heavens. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Okay. Congratulations. I heard you're able to sit in full lotus. No? Not yet? Just starting. That's great. Oh. Blessings. It takes a lot of blessings. Okay. See you later. Okay. So you have... You have to do something, okay, to go to the West. Okay, 95. On hearing this speech, then the members of the Great Assembly clearly saw the natures. They bowed together and exclaimed, This is indeed good. May all living beings of the Dharma realm who have heard this awaken at once and understand. 大众文说了然见性西街礼拜去 Very, very superior people. They saw this and they clearly saw the nature. Meaning, no doubt. No doubt at all. Okay? Uh, They bow together and exclaim, this is indeed good. Meaning, they feel good from emancipation. They're free from their own doubts. Okay? And they said, wow, their wisdom opened up and they said, may all living beings of all over the universe who have heard this teaching from Master Wainam awaken at once and understand, meaning that they uh, got great benefits from this certain teaching from Master Huynang. Proof right there. Okay? They're free from their own selfishness. And they say, wow, this is so great. I wish, I hope that more of you will benefit from it. Anyone has any questions or comments? Okay, 97, the master said, good knowing advisors, if you wish to cultivate, you may do so at home, need not to be a monastery. If you can practice at home, you're like the person of the East whose mind is good. Okay, back, let's backtrack a little. He promised to show the West to them, 
đi thế Yes one I would call it false advertising. Uh, I was wondering about that too. Uh, I, I was also wondering the the they uh, they all see their self nature, the audience at the time. And yeah. what does that mean? Did they really get enlightened? They saw the nature at that moment. Yes. So, so um, all of them got enlightened at that moment. Those people there at the moment, yes. Wow. Cool. And then that's equivalent see? to see the <laughs> doubt. <laughs> Did you notice her? She's <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, that's just amazing. That's really cool. <laughs> she said, I don't believe it. Not just amazing. I don't believe it. <laughs> He said, he said, that easy, really? <laughs> yeah, so cool. He said, different times, different kinds of people. No Googlers. <laughs> okay? They saw the nature. That's what he says. That's why. Guess what? They saw the nature. They said, wow, this is good. They don't jump up and down like, you know, like the typical Chinese or the Vietnamese. Oh, I'm alive, I'm alive. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's go have a drink. I mean, uh, let's go celebrate. <laughs> okay? They say, this is indeed good. It's so abdued, subdued. Hmm? Right there, as a proof. And then what else? They said, then they said, I got so much out of it. I wish that everyone else in the entire universe would get this too. This benefit too. And the nature, the question is that I don't believe it. <laughs> that easy? Chinese think alike. Look at the Vietnamese. Oh, I believe, I believe. <laughs> Not. Okay? Uh, and that's why he's such a, such a great teacher. He explained the Pure Land Dharma door, and in the end, instead of showing them the Pure Land, they became enlightened. And that's, he says, you're enlightened, I don't need to show you the Pure Land. Because once you're enlightened, it doesn't matter you're in the Pure Land or not in Pure Land, what's the difference? What difference does it make? Zero. Does it make sense? It used to bother me. No one dare ask the question. I didn't dare ask the question. You promise. You know? You promise us. What happened? How come no one asked? No one ever asked Master Shane Hoa. The first time I explained this, no one dare ask me either. So this time I have to ask myself. You guys are so polite. Unlike the young man back there who would like to ask questions I can't answer. Okay? Yeah, so cool. Okay. Anyway, so, so let's go to the commentary of the slide. Is there. Okay, now he says, you must cultivate, okay? You must cultivate. And you don't, you can do it at home. You don't need to be in monastery, okay? Uh, if you can practice at home, then uh, you like a person uh, who's uh, in the East, uh, who uh, has a good heart, has a good mind. Okay? Uh, East here represent uh, the Sa world, our defiled world. Okay? All right? 99. If you dwell in a monastery but do not cultivate, you are like the person of the West whose mind is evil. Merely purify your mind. That is the West of your self-nature. 
，在世不修，如西方人心恶，但心清净，即是自信西方。Okay, it's a commentary in one hundred. Uh, uh, on the other hand, a lot of us、uh, who live in monasteries but do not cultivate. You know, like a person who is in the Pure Land, the West represents the Pure Land, but whose mind is evil. Okay, yes, there are such people in the Pure Land. They are, they are there, but their minds are still pretty evil. So it takes them a little bit longer to become a Buddha. Merely purifying your mind, okay, whether you're in the East or the West, and that is the West of your self nature. This the good side of your self nature. Remember,、uh, the premise is that you create your own heaven, you create your own hells. Similarly,、uh, the West is created by the good part of your self nature, of Amitabha's nature, your nature, our nature combined. The good part of it created the Western bliss pure land. Yes. It's unfortunately,、uh, it's a tiny part of us, <laughs> okay.、Uh, but it's we do have a part in the creation of the pure land ourselves. All right, sounds good. Yes, sir. In the back.、Uh, when we do pure land blessings, do we also? Create conditions for us, us ourselves in the pure land. Absolutely. When you do pure land blessings, you're creating the blessings for you to be able to reap the benefits of the pure land. And part of that is for you to be able to go there. Okay. Next, one on one, and you have a, a magistrate who is very smart. Chinese official, he says, the honorable Wade asks further, how should those at home cultivate? Please instruct us. Wei Gong 又问，在家如何修行？愿为教授。This what's interesting about this is that you know when the master said you can cultivate at home, you don't need to be in monastery. What does it mean? What does it really mean? What he's referring to is the fact that you can cultivate by yourself. You don't need others. You don't need to others to cultivate with you, give you instructions. Okay, that's possible.、Yeah. So that's why the magistrate immediately asks,、uh, "Please tell us how we can do it." Because for people like me, who are officials, who are busy, have a busy career and so forth, I can't go to monasteries. I have to cultivate at home. Please tell me how. Okay.、Mm. One o three. The master said, "I have composed a marvelous verse for the great assembly. Merely rely on the cultivate. You be as if always by my side. If you do not rely on this to cultivate, to cut your hair and lead the home life, what benefits would there be toward the way?" 诗言，吾与大众说无相送，但依此修，常与吾同处无别。若不依此修，剃发出家，于道何益 ？All right, and this is a the subtle part of the teaching I want to draw your attention to. He says, "I have a marvelous verse for you, all of you. Great assembly means all of you, including us. That's a great assembly. Okay, marvelous verse meaning that." You、uh, should not be attached. Okay. All right.、Mm. That's that's. Oh, somebody just hurt so bad. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> you see how much suffering even children are experiencing. The funny thing to me is that you take it as normal. Huh? You think it's normal because that's how it is for us. We accept it. We take it for granted that we're supposed to suffer. And then when you get older, 
He said, I don't want to suffer. <laughs> That's knowing too much. Okay? Hmm. Hmm. So the markless verse, meaning that you should not be attached. And eventually, you understand. Okay? Right now, be attached. Eventually, you have to not to detach from it. That's all it means. Because don't tell me, how come, don't ask me, how come it's a markless verse? You tell us, don't be attached. Then, 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 then how can I cultivate? The cultivate, cultivation here means that you follow the verse to cultivate. And that's important. If you follow it to cultivate, you like, as if by my side. This is a subtle teaching in Mahayana. You cultivate by following a good known advisor. And he says, I give you an expedient. You don't need to be with me. Just cultivate according to this verse. Then you as if I'm guiding you. Please remember this, you know, this, it got lost in the Chinese and the Vietnamese and the Korean and so forth. Buddhism, Buddhist teachings. This is, he says, you have to follow a good new advisor. Right here. He says, you need a good new advisor to cultivate. Don't cultivate by yourself. So in one word he says, one side he says, cultivate by yourself, <laughs> but you still need me. Don't walk out here and say, hey, I'm staying home. You know, Lloyd says, oh, I'm so happy, I don't need to go to the temple anymore. <laughs> no. As long as you have a cultiv uh, good no advisor, you can cultivate anywhere. That's a message. But he says, just follow. Follow this verse. Follow my instructions. And as if you're by my side. Okay? If you don't follow my uh, instructions and you become a monk and take on the appearance of a monk and claim, proclaim to the world you're cultivating and so forth, you get no benefits at all. Zero benefits. And that, to me, is what I find to be sad about Master Shinoa's disciples, some of them, you know. They use his name and they use his uh, reputation to make a name for themselves by claiming to be Master Shinoa's disciples, Master Shinoa's devoted followers and so forth, and they're spreading the words again. But uh, uh, um, but they are not they 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 are, they're doing it for their own gains, unfortunately. That's sad to me. Hmm? It's a form of betrayal to me. Okay, never mind. It's none of our business. Shall we go? Continue. Uh, sutra text. The verse runs, the mind is equanimous, why toil keeping precepts? It's brutal. <laughs> he doesn't beat around the bush. He says, here it goes. The mind is equanimous. Why toil keeping precepts? What's equanimous? What is that? Wei Meng. Maybe no thoughts. No thoughts. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, uh, you still here? Can you hear me? Yeah. 
Oh, uh, you, you said uh, you said uh, e equanimity is no discrimination. You said you said that, didn't you? You said markless is uh, I, I, I forgot, but then you said e equanimity is no discrimination. I think you said you said that during the Chan Chi. You can do better than that, Mickey. Anyone else? No? Anyone else? Did I say that? He put words in my mouth constantly. Little Mickey, that's why I call you Mickey. You, you kind of Mickey. Anyone else? Yes, Daniel. Uh, it could mean like harmony. Harmony? Oh, that's the Japanese thing. No, we are no Japanese here today. Anyone? Yeah? Wei Mountain. Yeah, go ahead with number seven away mountain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, go, go. Uh, I looked this up on my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it says in Buddhism, equanimity is one of the four sublime attitudes and is considered neither a thought nor an emotion. Okay. It is rather the steady conscious realization of reality's transience. And what is the source of this, uh, this quote of yours? <laughs> <laughs> who, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Wikipedia. <laughs> Wikipedia? Is that the, from the dark web? <laughs> okay, be careful. Wikipedia also has connections to the dark web, I feel, sometimes. I don't know what kind of nonsense this is. Equanimity is whatever they say. Seriously? You two, go ahead. <laughs> From Lyo, Ping Deng is no expectation. From Diego, good things and bad things are of the same. It's, your, it's just your confused mind discriminating them. From Alex, equanimity that is free from passion, aggression, and prejudice. Who was that? The last person? Alex. Alex. Oh, of course. You, you, you mean, uh, how come you, you so quiet nowadays? I don't want to hear her anymore. As if she's alive, but she's dead. <laughs> what happened to you? I've she's back? I thought, I thought she's staying on. No, what happened? You're confusing me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Say something. <laughs> Prove to me you're not dead. <laughs> I'm alive. I'm here. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what's e equanimous? Hey, Shen Yun. Shen Yun. <laughs> What's equanimous? Yeah. <laughs> Wei Mao. Uh, Master, someone just said in the in the YouTube, you gave the definition for markless and equanimity in the Chan Chi. You said markless is no discrimination, equanimity is no expectation. I did. Yeah, 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 you did. You can ask Daniel, go for his Daniel, because we were talking about it, and he went and found the YouTube video. <laughs> hey, I can't find myself. <laughs> okay, you got me. <laughs> but I was wrong. Uh, 
Anyone? <laughs> What's economist? Equal is equal. Nimus, whatever it means. <laughs> you got half a right. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> yeah? So nimus is unanimous. <laughs> so everyone agrees it's equal. I don't know. <laughs> JMT, oh, Koreans are awake. <laughs> yeah. 평등하다는 것은 중도라고 생각합니다. Wow, CNN is laboring away, you know, she says, I gotta tell, I gotta tell master this, I gotta tell master. And what did she say? Economity is the middle way. The middle way, correct. Okay, anyone else? But I need more elaboration. What kind of middle way? Hmm? That's right, exactly. Equanimity is the middle way, yes. Okay, can you explain it more? Because you use, you know, we use uh, one jargon, one, one word, uh, uh, one jargon to explain it, another, another jargon that doesn't help. Way Mountain. Uh, yes, Master, only to complete uh, equanimous, equa is equal and animus is Saul. Shaolin? Is, sa no, Saul. What? The Saul. Saul? Saul. Saul. Saul? Saul. Are you talking about like a sour, like a vinegar? <laughs> no, soul. <laughs> Don't help me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, what is that again? <laughs> Don't help him! <laughs> I want him to get extricate himself from this sour thing here. <laughs> Equal Seoul. Seoul? Like Korea capital? <laughs> mm, no, Seoul like uh, what Christians believe uh, governs, governs the body. You are such an externalist. <laughs> you're, quoting, you're quoting externalist sources. <laughs> well, this is the meaning of equanimous. <laughs> so, nanimous, nimus is Seoul? Is what it means in, in Latin? In Latin, anima, yes. Really? Oh, wow, how wow, really? interesting. Wow, thank you. That's, that's a nice to know. Nimus here is from a Latin root, I imagine. You know, it's the funny thing is, their Spanish and French are very similar. Do you realize that? French and Spanish, this, they're so close brothers in terms of Latin roots. So the, the Spanish people can pick up French pretty easily and vice versa. French people can pick up Spanish very easily. They're both impossible to learn. The, the verbs of conjugation is just so <laughs> it's, a, it's a discipline by itself. Anyway, so nimus is so sour. <laughs> she says so sour. <laughs> okay, equal so. How beautiful. Yes, Wei Mountain. Master, how about dust, dust are moving? No matter what circumstances, mine is not moving. Where is the sow? <laughs> what about the sow? That's for the oranges. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are too much. <laughs> okay, God. I cannot believe it. I never heard of such Dharma lecture where people are joking around left and right. What happened to solemnity and, 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 and uh, the soul is equal. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. 
So how is the soul equal? Yes. One. But there is no uh, self and the others. No self and others. self and others. Okay. So equal. <laughs> okay, Wei Maung. Uh, su substance is the same in every person. It's just the, uh, the function is different. Two Mickey Mouse. <laughs> That's not bring up substance and function again. This is a six-page sutra for, for God's sake. Uh, Wei Maung. from sour to the substance and function again. Uh, yeah? That's it? No, no commentary? Okay. Yeah. Look at that. I'm so proud. Half of the audience in Wei Mountain Temple are my left home people disciples. <laughs> and you realize that? I just realized, oh, 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. You see? Same exact, same equal number. That equal nimity. <laughs> oh, no, that's no longer equal with Alex. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, the mind is equanimous okay equanimous means equal one equals two three equals ten twenty equals one million men equals women children equals adults everything is equal no preference what did I explain again <laughs> don't quote me Okay, please stop quoting me. This is embarrassing. <laughs> what what did they, they claim that I explained equanimity as again? Anyone remembers? No expectations. No expectations? Can I change my mind today? <laughs> okay. It's equal. equal. I take back the no expectations thing. Okay? From now on, it will be known as equal. <laughs> Until set <sad> otherwise. <laughs> okay? Equal. Today, we talk about equal. Okay? Chinese equals Korean equals Vietnamese equals Japanese equals is it clear? Don't say I'm, I'm Chinese. I'm better than Americans. My Buddhism is better than American. No, it's the same. It's equal. No difference. Same thing Vietnamese, same thing Korean. Everything is equal. Okay? It's not no expectation. It's equal. <sighs> I hate it when you quote me when I'm wrong. <laughs> okay? Mm. Who's the, the girl again? I know I'm supposed to be equal. <laughs> okay. Uh, when the mind is equal, Okay? Equal. So give me an example of that's what's not equal. It's easy for you, right? Because your mind is unequal. So far, so good? Your mind is naturally unequal. But if your mind is equanimous, why toil keeping precepts? We mount. Uh, you ask something that's 
You want an example of some of this unequal? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, I'm not equal to my mom at all. <laughs> She's much better than me. Oh, so sweet. Yeah. And your mommy's favorite? No, no, Master, it's for survival. <laughs> <laughs> survival. So survival is more important than death to you? Yes. Then your so mind, mind is not equanimous. Your mind no, is not equanimous, Mickey. Not at all. No, not at all. Mickey Mouse is better than Minnie Mouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to be more equal sour. Okay, very good. Uh, keeping precepts. Okay. Precepts are rules of morality. Uh, rules of morality. Okay? What's rules of morality? Right and wrong. It's a clear demarcation. It's right up to right, and at the edge, it's wrong. And vice versa. You get to the edge of wrong, then it's right. Is that clear? It's night and day. It's no, there's no compromise. Is that clear? The precept, nature precept, it says night and day. Okay? Is that clear? Now, in order to keep precepts, to maintain your morality, it's a lot of work. It's hard work. Yes or no? Yes? Agree? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, so, so, do you believe that if your mind is equanimous, there's no need to keep precepts? Why not? <laughs> My mind is equanimous. Scream all you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's the grandmas who are more worried than we are. Uh -huh. Clearly, the minds are not equanimous. <laughs> Wei Mang, go ahead. Oh, uh, is maybe it means he said, "Don't why toil keeping precepts?" Maybe it means that when your mind's equanimous. There's no, it's not hard to keep precepts at all. Because why, why would you even want to br break the precepts if it's, uh, if your mind's equanimous? You won't have any reason to want to even consider to break the precepts. Uh, are you sure? Oh, just from what I saw there, he said, why toil? Uh, to keep precepts. Yeah, why would it be a toil to keep the precepts if your mind's equanimous? It doesn't make any sense why it would be hard to keep the precepts if your mind was equanimous. Are you sure? No, because my mind's not <laughs> equanimous. <laughs> if you're not sure, why do you raise your hand? Are you testing me? Take a stand, man. If, if my mind was equanimous, there would be no reason for me to even want to consider to break precepts. It'd be easy to keep a precept if my mind was equanimous. 
When my, when my mind is equanimous, it's easy to keep a precept. There's no even, no even thought about breaking a precept. Is your even, mind equanimous? At, at certain times, it's more equanimous than others. And at those times, there's, it's much, the, the desire to break a precept is significantly less. Tell me the times when it's equanimous. Uh, mostly when I'm at temple, I don't think about, oh, I, I want to break, pre or I, I'll think about breaking precept. When you're at the temple? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, I mean, it's not completely equanimous, but it's more so than, you know, if I'm doing something else during the day. When is it ever completely equanimous? It's never completely equanimous. Then it's you don't only... know what you're talking about. Maybe that's why you're not sure. <laughs> Anyone? Yeah? You agree with this? When your mind is equanimous, then why try to keep precepts? Why work hard to keep precepts? Hmm? Do you notice? I'm going to teach you something, all of you something. Okay? The boy there. Okay? The boy. Daniel. Yes? Not the big Daniel, but small Daniel. Tiny Daniel. Okay? Daniel, okay, uh, insists on having his way. And when you don't give it to him, he'll fight to death. That's why you have to recognize that and don't fight him. Okay? And yield. So the mommy is pretty good. The mommy is meditating and shaking. <laughs> feeling good. I'm feeling good. <laughs> and the boy says, pay attention to me, mommy. I need your attention. What did she do? She stopped. That's a wisdom, hmm? uh, because you said, go away, <laughs> and he only escalates. You can't win, okay? Okay, so pretty good. The mom is pretty good, okay? Mm. And same thing, uh, you, have, you have to learn to yield to him, that's all, until he can listen to reason, that's all. He knows he's going to get his way, okay? And that's how it is. That's how it is. When he gets a little bit older, he'll be known as Mr. Manic. <laughs> how do I know? Moi aussi. Me too. Okay, let's go back. You think it's, it's, uh, it's uh, insignificant, but you see, you learn so much right there from the interchange and how the kids behave. Yeah, we can learn so much from it. Okay? Yes, sir. Four. Thank you, Master. I'll, I'll give it a try. Um, I think maybe um, the patriarch meant is uh, the precepts are helping people to reach the status of being completely economist. So if you are already economist, then there's no need to think about precepts. Are you sure? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's with you? I thought it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Mickey Mouse thing. But he too, he said, maybe. <laughs> if it's maybe, why do you raise your hand? Take a stand, man. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah? Yes, uh, four. One. I will back my husband, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you sure about it? I mean, I can see that, okay. But that means you also are not sure. Yes, way mountain. 
Master, maybe is the middle way. <laughs> Were you listening, Mickey? Stop it. Don't, don't maybe me. Don't, don't maybe you. Don't maybe. <laughs> okay? Just say, I think. Okay? Yeah. Go for it. I just, uh, I don't like to form strong opinions because uh, I'm always proven wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you hopeless! <laughs> Why are you so afraid? Clearly, you're not equanimous. You're afraid to be wrong. Equanimous says, I'm wrong, so be it. I'm right, big deal. I'm wrong, so be it. You have to be more equanimous. Very good. Anyone? Why, when you're economist, you don't need to keep precepts? Hmm? Why? Why? Can I give you a hint? If you are equanimous, a yes way mountain. Master, maybe it's related to the wisdom. What? What's wrong with you people? Now it's the Korean who... <laughs> Cut it out, please. Yes, J uh, JMT. Master, Master, can you hear from us? What? Oh, I think it's the, when uh, we you uh, feel uh, economy, um, we see ourselves like others, so we don't do anything to harm them, so we don't have to keep precepts. You have a... I'm worried about you now. We are not the same as others. You taller than, you know, than uh, who? Everyone is tall back there, uh, over there. Oh, God. <laughs> no, we're not the same. When are you going to learn? We are left home people. They are not. <laughs> They're supposed to serve us. Okay, anyone else? Oh, good Lord. Can I ask uh, left home people not to say anything? I'm, I'm about to have it up to here with my patients. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. First, the lay people go, maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> and my left home people say, I'm the same as they, meaning I'm maybe too. <laughs> uh, anyone, why, oh, why? Let me give you a hint. Hmm? No, why do you break precepts? Because you calculate. He said, you know, if I lie a little, who's going to know? You look for gains. Gains are important to you. That's why you break precepts. You afraid of losses. That's why you break precepts. There are two kinds of people. People will hear it, 
the profound wisdom I just gave them, they go, hmm, that's me. <laughs> These are the, I don't believe you. <laughs> I'm not like that. <laughs> huh? You are always seeking gains. That's why you break precepts. You're afraid of losing. That's why you're breaking precepts. You believe or not? And if your mind says, I gain, I lose, same to me, then you don't break precepts anymore. It's that simple. Agree or disagree? Look at the profound wisdom that the six-page chart just shared with us. We don't dare look at ourselves this way. Do you? You don't. Because you can't face it yourself. And that's what I referred to earlier, the dark corners of your mind. You say, no, I'm not going there. That's where your greed, your anger, your stupidity hide. It's off limits. No one can touch it. Not my mother, not my father, not my husband, not my children. No one, no God, no Buddha can touch it. Sounds familiar. Hi, Hitler. I mean. <laughs> Who raised your hand again? <laughs> Why made you? He made me say it. I, I was in, across my mind. Look at him. Hi, Hitler. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay? Um, Wei Mao. Uh, yeah, Master, that's what I was saying before. Uh, when your mind is equanimous, you won't want to break the preset. There's no reason to worry about keeping the preset if you're not uh, going to break it. Yeah, that's true. It sounds, uh, sounds similar. Okay? Very good. I love the jacket. <laughs> and you look at him and look at me and say, oh God, my life is so boring. <laughs> I can't take this. <laughs> You're so privileged, my friend. I don't know. I guess my mind is not equal soul. Okay? Okay, we agree, right? It makes sense, right? Yes, too. Is it? Okay. Uh, I have a question. So if the mind is totally equal, then is it still treating keeping precept and breaking precept the same or different? So are these two not equal or equal? I hate you. <laughs> Why can't you just let be bygone be bygone? <laughs> You're getting back at me clearly. Help. So it's fair. He says so. That means that this is equal equal soul person, huh? He says, if I break precepts or I don't break precepts, it's the same thing. Is it? Yeah, the Vietnamese says, no, are you kidding me? Over my dead body, he says. 
You're not equanimous, clearly. Anyone else? Wei Mao. Uh, See, I it's, mean, so, it's so DRBA. You know, the DRBA, you know, the DRBA, DRBA is my master's uh, uh, followers. Okay. Okay. You, you talk to any of them? They say, no, 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 no. My master says, no, 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 no. They all like that, let me tell you. That's them. I, I think at that point, uh, there'd be no concept of precept. Because, uh, like you said, it's, it's all about gain. Don't quote me, man. <laughs> oh, well, uh, there's, no, there's no gain. There's, no, uh, there's, no, there's nothing to gain, so there's no precept to, to break. Because it, it just wouldn't even exist in, in the mind of someone like that to do anything for gain and uh, do anything to, to break a precept. So I, I, I don't think it would even exist in that person's concept of mind. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Nice try. <laughs> yes, Wei Mao. God, we, the, the Americans are so talkative. You know, they say, ooh, 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 I know, I know, I know. Yeah, go ahead, Wei Mountain. And the Koreans say, I don't know, I don't know. Let the Americans embarrass themselves. Yes, nine. Oh, thank you, Master. I have an answer for the, whether breaking a precept would be still, uh, or they think about whether breaking a precept or not breaking a precept. Um, I think that uh, the Vinaya is there to go ahead and get a firmer understanding of uh, the <laughs> law of karma. I know. <laughs> and, and, uh, These, you guys are old jokers. I mean, this is... <laughs> oh, my God. He said, I'm... 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 So serious. Oh, my God. And the kid is trying... I was trying to get away from it. I'm out of here. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's yes. just, it's my life. So oh, it's the same. Uh, yeah, Vanaya there to understand karma, and then once you reach the Bodhisattva level, um, that are yeah, you can break precepts as you understand that they're um, expedients, and so <laughs> that they're methods in which they will not negatively affect the karma of other people, but will positively affect it. Uh, and sometimes that means breaking the Vinaya. But my question regarding that is for somebody who's not there, um, how is the thought, I don't know, different from ignorance? Okay, one thing at a time. China girl, you, did you hear him? He says, for some people, a certain level, Breaking precepts and not breaking precepts is the same. But for those people there, I'm not going to name names again. <laughs> they are saying, over my dead body. See that? See how peaceful they are? Once they said, over my dead body, they're so relieved. They said, I'm free. No more pressure on me. Okay, got that? Okay, so, so clearly, clearly, those people are not equanimous. Is that clear? They haven't got it yet. They don't understand equan equ equanimity yet. That's why they say, over my dead body. It's not the same. But if you're you, if your mind is equanimous, it's the same. Breaking precept, not breaking, uh, what's the big deal? Don't need to be, uh, it don't nece doesn't necessarily have to be like, uh, because uh, I am enlightened or so. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Okay? For such people with wisdom, they said, you can break all you want. I don't care. You can keep all you want. 
good for you. You can break all you want. Tough luck for you. And that's my Shishinua. That's why I referring to earlier this morning. He said, you know, he's, his Chan practice is that everything is okay. No problem. So his mind is equanimous. Second definition of equanimous, everything is okay, no problem. Does it help? Not all of them got it. That's why they say, over my dead body. And he says, you're so wrong, you tell them. You're so wrong. Vinaya says so. Buddha says so. Yes, Buddha said so. Vinaya says so to the people who are not equanimous. But when you attain equanimity, it doesn't matter. And my proof is Masha Shrinua. To him, it doesn't matter at all. Is it clear? Yes, JMT. Uh, my experience, uh, more than keeping the rules and keeping the rules, is more than keeping the In my case, keeping precept is better than me. It, I gain more than breaking the precept. That's why I keep the precept. Very good. When you have not reached equanimity yet, keep precepts. When you reach equanimity, then you find out then. Then you find out that Keeping precepts and not keeping precepts actually is the same. There's no difference. Until you have wisdom, it's better not to break precepts. Once you have wisdom, it's the same. It's that, it's that simple. So, uh, so you cannot say uh, the Buddha says, um, six paychecks says uh, it's the same, so, so no point in keeping precepts. Okay? Not true. Only when your mind is truly equanimous. If your mind is still like Mickey Mouse, then you have to keep precepts. Is that clear? Do we understand each other? No excuses here. So that's why when people say, you know, you got to keep precepts, got precepts, then yes, these people have not reached equanimity yet. That's all. There's nothing bad, nothing good about it. It's just the way it is. It just is the case. Okay? What's dangerous is such people who have not reached that level claim and really believe they know everything. That is dangerous. It's very damaging to think that you know everything, you understand everything when you aim got it yet. And that's why, to me, those are the most dangerous people in the world. The most dangerous people in Buddhism are those. Not the demons. Not the evil people. It's those people who think they know everything. There's no such a thing to think you know Everything. Until you become a Buddha, there's no such a thing. All right? Mount, way mount. Master, I was going to ask what's the level of truly um, equanimous? I think you just answer is that. Uh, Buddha's state? This equanimity here is what he's referring to here refers to a high level enlightenment. We're talking about the Mahasattvas. 
high level mahasattvas. The low level bodhisattvas don't get it yet. They're still too new. They still the wisdom is not deep enough yet. That's why they still have patches of of uh, of uh, discriminations. Okay, patches where they have personal preferences, personal prejudices, and that's the case of those people. They have prejudices and they don't realize. They're so sure because they're hurt. The great master says, you have to keep precepts. You have to keep precepts. And they don't realize who those instructions were intended for. Okay? Way my own. Master, these, uh, this, this teaching is, and instructions are very hard and difficult to understand and follow. Because uh, on, on one hand, we need to uh, develop good karma and cut off bad karma in, able, in order for us to move up. Yes. And on the other hand, you're, you're basically saying good karma, bad karma don't exist. It's a, just a discrimination. So it's, a, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's really hard to uh, um, understand. Is there any way you could maybe uh, help us? in uh, applying this to our own lives or should we just stick to the uh, own, own, just discriminating between good and bad karma? Right now for you personally, be... for you personally, keep precepts. That's all. Don't worry about equanimity. Yeah, I, okay. And does just that, keep precepts, I mean, that's that... it. Okay? You should be like those, uh, those people over my dead body. Okay? I'd rather die than, keep, than break precepts. That's where you are right now. When you get a little bit higher, that's when someone else will come along and says, it's okay, go break precepts. <laughs> you see? They're not there yet. That's why they, they say, over my dead body. Okay? Hmm. Don't worry, that's why you follow a good new advisor and then when the time comes, you know, you'll be told otherwise. For now, stick to, you know, don't complicate things. Wei Maung. Uh, the, wh why am I even learning about equanimity in the first why place? Why are you learning? Yeah, if it's, it's uh, n not meant to be followed at all. Why is Master Six Patriarch teaching this to, to us? Or to me, particularly. It's because it's for Minnie Mouse. It has nothing to do with Mickey. Minnie listens still. Here's my problem. I talk, I need to speak down of both Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse and Pluto. Okay? So part of the list, part of the learning process is that even though it doesn't apply to you, what it does, though, is you have an edge over those people who says, over my dead, dead body, that's the only thing that matters to me. My master only says so. You rather die than break precepts. That's what the Chinese are taught. I'm telling you, our American Dharma is just, it's right for now. But eventually, down the road, when you get higher, okay, then it doesn't matter anymore. Call it. Premature instructions. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Wow, you guys did well. I thought it would take over an hour to discuss this with you. I was about to give you a hard time, but I couldn't. You were the one who gave me a hard time. <laughs> You're pretty good. You know too much. It's no fun anymore. It ceases to be fun for me. I can't give you a hard time anymore.
When it's no more fun, eh, why do it? Anyway, hmm. shall we continue? You see, see how brutal it is? It's the first thing you say, you don't have to come to the temple, you stay at home. Okay? <laughs> he says immediately, the mind is one of us, while keeping precepts. All right? It's like, 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 uh, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, brutality, Chan brutality. 107. Practicing directness of what use is Chan meditation. Being grateful, one is filial and supports the parents. 行直和用修禅, mm. So you see, backtracking to this, you see, you see, Mickey, this tells you, should tell you that the level of Master Hui Neng disciples, he says, you guys are so cool. You can stay home and practice. Okay? That's how now advanced his disciples were. They're not the same as us. Okay? Don't think so highly of yourself. The first instruction is that mine is one of us. And Mickey says, huh? You see that? It's not for us. Next. Practicing directness of what use is Chan meditation. Don't listen to this. It's my only explanation. <laughs> you need Chan meditation. I don't care what they say. I don't care what he says. I don't care what Master Sri Anuha says. You need Chan meditation. Get that straight. I'm not looking at anyone. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Meaning what? It says, the ultimate Chan, if you really understand Chan, you're so direct. Huh? Meaning what? The more advanced you are in Chan, the more direct you become. That's a corollary. Hmm? See? If you direct, no need for Chan. Conversely speaking, if your Chan level is high, you are so much more. Do we understand each other? This is how you can gauge. This is what we do. This is a tip. This is an insider tip. This is what we do to gauge your level of chant. What does it mean to be direct, by the way? When you direct, what happens? You hurt people's feelings, don't you? Can I be blunt with you? I'm going to hurt you. That's what it means. I'm going to hurt your feelings. Are you ready? Yes? This is so American. Can I be blunt with you? When your wife tells you that, run for cover. <laughs> okay. Uh, excuse me, can, can we do this later? I need to go to the bathroom right now. <laughs> That's my advice to you. That's called American Wei Yang. Okay? Know when to fall, you know when to, uh, what's the, that song here? You don't listen to country music? <sighs> You know when to hold them, you know when to fold them. That's Kenny Rogers' song. <laughs> Am I the only one here? I can understand these uh, uh, Chinese ladies in back. So, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Kenny Rogers, Kenny Rogers? Who's that? <laughs> Show them Kenny Rogers. 
นึกนึก show them Kenny Rogers look up Kenny Rogers on YouTube Kenny Rogers you know when to fold them you don't have the phone yeah God yeah. okay yeah so so that's what happens when you are direct you hurt people's feelings and this is why the Vietnamese by the way they go like this. <laughs> it's the last thing they want to do, the Vietnamese want to do, is be direct with you. It's like playing the football, the soccer thing, you know. You go this way, you go this way, you go. And you kick over here, you know. Uh, that's very, very Vietnamese. Yes or no, Vietnamese people. <laughs> It, it's a cultural thing because we're afraid. The reason you're not direct is that you're afraid to hurt people's feelings. It doesn't pay to hurt people's feelings. Huh? Okay. Uh, and, and this is why the Vietnamese struggle with John. Do we have any Vietnamese left at DTT? <laughs> <laughs> the ones here we know, it doesn't matter anymore, you know. <laughs> They've been beaten so often. <laughs> Nothing surprises them. See, I told you, no Vietnamese left. <laughs> See, only Jew, who is not Vietnamese. And the other one is... Yeah, yeah, see? And the one behind them is Chinese, so it's, we're safe. You see that? <laughs> okay? Uh, and, and, and that's, why, that's why the more you learn Chan, you should, you should uh, be more and more direct. And you find out is a clear advantages of being more direct. Why? People trust you more. At least the one who's still friends with you. <laughs> the one who's no longer friends with you, we don't want them. Okay? But the one who still uh, can, can, can recover from being hurt by you, the one who will stick with you. That's the advantage. Yes, Way Mountain. Uh, Master, I asked you this morning, uh, I said, should we be more like Master Xinhua? Where uh, every, everything's cool, everything's okay, and uh, I'm just going to take everything as it is, or should we be more like you? And I'd say the better definition of more of you is direct, right? So um, He who loves me follows me. Yeah, uh, that's why I'm here, Master. But that that being said, um, in 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 my in my personal life, should I strive to be uh, more kind or more direct? And is there a way to be kind and direct at the same time? Because I uh, I uh, I really don't want to hurt anybody' feelings. Oh, I prefer to hurt people's feelings than apologize. <laughs> the, the, the problem with people is that when they hurt all these people's feelings, they deny it. If you hurt people's feelings, if you intentionally hurt people's feelings, you know you're going to hurt people's feelings, be prepared to apologize. That's all. And my attitude is that if they forgive you, they'll be on your side. It's the kind of people you want to have a relationship with. They cannot forgive you, okay? It's best that you don't have a relationship with them. That's all. That's my personal preference. 
we cannot please everyone. The premise that you should avoid offending people, okay? I'm not talking about your boss, okay, young man? <laughs> Be careful. There's limits, okay? Uh, when someone pays you, that's the exception. <laughs> no, we are we doing time. We're not doing stupid things, okay? When they own us, don't be too direct. <laughs> and if they don't, who cares? <laughs> be all as direct as you want. <laughs> yes, Way Mountain. Mm. Master, the song you were looking for is The Gambler by Kenny Rogers. Ah, the gambler. Thank you. Gambler, show, show, show the girls. <laughs> thank you, thank you. See how amazing you all are speaking Dharma. It's so fascinating. Mickey Mouse speaks Mickey Mouse's Dharma, and the Catholic speaks John and uh, Kenny Rogers Dharma. Yes? All right. Okay. Time is almost up. Any final question? They still have one thing. Can we finish this? Huh? Show, show me. Can you roll this thing? Okay. Being grateful, one is filial and support the parents. Being grateful. May I sell to you? May I remind you? That's another tip. Hmm? The more wisdom you have, the more grateful you become. Why? The, the wiser you are, the more you realize you didn't get there by yourself. It's impossible to get there by ourselves. Not possible. And that's why you see clearly, clearly that your benefactors were there for you when you needed it, without which you cannot make it. So that's why you become grateful. Until you get there, you don't realize how important your benefactors are to you, to your success. That's wisdom. And because you're grateful, that's when you have more people coming to support you and benefit you. How's that? Just by being grateful, you have the reputation of being grateful, more people will come and support you. Why? Because... They will gain from it. People of the world think of gain as taking. Yes? People of wisdom understand that gain is from giving. And give. not taking. That's what differentiates worldly people from cultivators. We're cultivating gratitude. Worldly people, they're cultivating gains. At some point in time, you first start by cultivating because it's profitable to you, beneficial to you. Eventually, when you open your wisdom, that's when you become grateful.
it's so cool. Hmm? So that's why it's like, think of it like your own children. They take and take and take and take until one day they get older. Look at you and say, wow, I got so much. That's when they become grateful. Okay? So being grateful once is filial and support the parents. Okay? You have to be filial and support your parents. That's what the master says. Okay? Just do it. Don't try to because, because, because. There's no need to, for because. If you really are grateful, who do you support first? Careful. <laughs> the RBA people says, my parents, of course. Wrong. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so uh, we can stop here. It's a very good lesson. When you express gratitude, make sure you feel you and support your parents. This is what he's teaching us. Hmm? It cannot go wrong, by the way. If you like this, it's very, very good. Okay, don't forget it. Thank you, everyone. We stop here today. Thank you all.